much Father Prasad, Father Lali, uh, members of the organizing committee, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very privilege to say a few words here today at your carol service. First, I must really congratulate um, all those wonderful singers, the wonderful choir that we had at the High Commission, thanks to all of you. And I must congratulate all those who train uh, the choir to sing so beautifully. So our thanks go out from, on behalf of the High Commission to all that, uh, for all that. Um, I know the Catholic ch uh, chaplaincies have gone from strength to strength after humble be beginnings under Father Rohitha at Wilson Green, subsequently in Hounslow and now in Kent. And I know your intention is to have a further one so that you have masses uh, celebrated uh, four times a month, so every week. Uh, and I wish you all success in those endeavors. Uh, I think it's wonderful uh, to see the hard work that all of you are doing. Um, it's also a time, Christmas time, to re reflect on what Christmas means to all of us, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, uh, and all the things uh, that, it, that derive from it. The wonderful peace and joy, the virtues of compassion, of forgiveness, of kindness, of generosity, and understanding for each other. And I think this is so important, particularly in Sri Lanka, since uh, um, we've had such a challenging time for 30 years. Uh, actually, I was, I was told initially, uh, now don't say a political speech, but that's a little bit difficult to do because I'm not sure what else I'm supposed to do. But actually, I don't think I ever say political speeches in terms of ideology. What I usually say uh, is the politics of the heart. So with your indulgence, I will still make a political speech, uh, the sort of speech I usually do. But what I usually do is I don't generally get involved in political ideology, but I will speak uh, from my own life's experiences, which is what I normally do. And I think communication and speech is actually very important because that's what gets our communities together. Um, as you know, I was a doctor of medicine here, and when I studied and then subsequently worked in the NHS, uh, what it taught me was to respect each other it taught me an empathy and understanding of each of us. It taught me the challenges and difficulties each of us face in our lives, all of us as human beings. But it also taught me to respect each and every one of us equally. Um, I also learned that Western medicine, even though it professes to cure everyone, sometimes we fail. And it taught me that what is far more important is to cure sometimes but to comfort always as we aim to heal wounds. And this applies not only to medicine, not only to health, but also for us to heal the wounds of conflict. Um, subsequently, I was also involved well, during that time in the Commonwealth and had to travel widely to different Commonwealth countries. What it taught me was the diversity, the great differences in different cultures. And it taught me to try and understand. We may not understand each other's cultures, but what we have to do is respect each other. As I've always said, it's when we respect the differences in each and every one of us. Let us not just tolerate each other. Each of us is different. If we were the same, it would be very boring. We would all be robots. The beauty of human beings is that we are different. But we should not. Many people speak about tolerance. Oh, we tolerate. I'm very tolerant. I think we have to go beyond that if we are to have a sustainable peace in our country. We should not just tolerate each other. We must respect each other with our differences. You may be different from me. You may have different thoughts from me. You may have a different political ideology from me. You may even start giving political speeches when you're not supposed to. But I should respect you and you should respect me. Um, so I think we should respect each other because it is when we respect each other's diversity that we give each other dignity. And it is only when we give each other dignity that we will have a truly long-lasting peace in our country. And in that context, all of you here in the diaspora have a huge part to play. You know, we often as Sri Lankans play the blame game and say we blame this one, that one, this head, that opposition, this person, that person. We have to stop looking to Sri Lanka and blaming Sri Lanka. We are Sri Lankans. But we're living here, and it has to start with our hearts. We have to open our hearts to each other, to all the different communities, Tamil, Sinhalese, Muslim, Burger, Malay. Because it is only then, when we work together as one Sri Lankan, 
that we will truly build a long-lasting and pluralistic and inclusive society in our country, back home. And we don't need to wait for Sri Lanka to do it. We can set an example right here. Because all of you are living in Britain, you can make the difference. And that's something, as we go towards the new year, after celebrating Christmas, I appeal to all of you, as I always have done, reach out to the other communities. Because it is you that can make the difference. Subsequently, when I went to Sri Lanka, I sat, uh, it was still during the time of conflict, I sat on a little um, peace and reconciliation committee, and the war was still going on. And everyone said, why are you wasting your time? He's obviously been in England too long. He's wasting his time on reconciliation when there's terrorism going on. But the reason I sat on that was because we brought people together from different parts of the country. And I said, and I always felt, that when peace happens, we need to have the framework the frame of mind to be prepared to accept that peace. However challenging, with whatever difficulties we achieve that peace, we have to be ready to embrace that peace and also embrace the dignity and still provide dignity to everyone after that peace. And that is something that is very important. Whilst we have achieved peace, it's wonderful, after 28 years of conflict, we achieve peace under the leadership of His Excellency President Mahindra Rajapaksa. Finally, we have that opportunity to get together. And I've always said, two and a half thousand years of conflict, uh, two and a half thousand years we've lived together, so 28 years of conflict is not going to prevent us from living together again. But in order to do that, we have to learn that virtue of forgiveness and humility. Now that I'm a High Commissioner, I think uh, particularly in terms of uh, uh, politics of the heart, I think my duty and my challenge has been actually to get communities to start speaking to each other. So I always, when I started on my first day at the High Commission, I said, uh, I can't answer for whoever came before me or who comes after me. But during my tenure, the doors are open to all races and all religions. I have also consistently said, I don't call myself Tamil or Sinhalese or Muslim or Burger or Malay. I'm Sri Lankan, and I'm proud to be Sri Lankan. But what is very important, we can't compartmentalize. I think it is wrong. I, 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 that's why I do think it's a bit silly to be told, don't speak, I don't have a political speech. Because we can't say, don't say this, don't say that. Don't have this ideology, don't, say, uh, don't have that ideology. We need to start talking. We've had peace. But let's talk about what hurts us. Let's talk about what did hurt us, what hurts us in the future. Because only when we start talking to each other with compassion, with forgiveness, with tolerance, that we will be able to live to work together to build a better future. This is not about us, to build a better future for our children and our children's children so that they can live together. So that is what is very important. So we have to show tolerance to each other. We have to show forgiveness to each other in true Christmas spirit. And to me, that is what this Christmas spirit is all about. I know it's nice to have a party, but I think the beauty of Christmas is that it reminds us not to be proud, to forget our own ego, because half the time wars, wars are started because of individual selfishness or individual ego or individual pride. So we need to come down off our high horse, each and every one of us, humble ourselves and accept each other because it is then that we can build a better future for our country. And you know, it was very sad to hear that Nelson Mandela passed away last week. We went to lots of memorial masses in his honor, but I remember the time I was a young, uh, bit of an activist uh, uh, medical student and there used to be a flame outside the Africa house for every day Nelson Mandela was in prison and there was this whole campaign to end apartheid. And I remember as a young sort of uh, activist, I also stood there and joined the campaign to free Nelson Mandela. And many years later, in 1990, after he was freed, I'm happy to say that he gave his first press conference in England at my society. So that was very wonderful. And many people say, oh, he, f uh, I mean, I attended many services last week for him. And many people have different ideals of him. They say he fought for democracy. He fought for justice, and he fought for um, uh, universal peace. But actually, what he fought for was freedom from racial oppression. He fought for freedom of one large group affecting another large group or oppressing each other. And that's what we forget.
But the most important thing, the thing I used to admire about Nelson Mandela and what I admire today about Nelson Mandela, beyond all those things of justice and tolerance, is that Nelson Mandela's most wonderful and strongest point was that he was emblematic of the concept of forgiveness. He was in prison for 27 years and he still forgave his prison captors and everyone who imprisoned him. And it is only because he, he rose above individual ego. He was humble. He humbled himself. That is what made him a great man. And that's someone I always dream of and always uh, dream to emulate. Simply because he was able to humble himself. He was able to transcend his own ego. And he was able to forgive. He had no bitterness and remorse, even though he was in prison for 27 years. So it is in that spirit, I think, of forgiveness and tolerance that we need to work together. Tamil, Sinhalese, uh, Muslim, Burger, Malay, all religions, Buddhist, Christian, Hindu and Islam. Because I still have hope for our country. Many people are demagogues of division. They say, oh, we should keep you apart. They criticize each other. I don't think so. I think that will never, we should not subscribe to those who criticize us or who criticize our progress. What we need to do is say, never mind, there will always be criticism. And criticism is healthy, so what? But what we can do in our own little way is contribute to making Sri Lanka a better place. And that is the true spirit I think we can take forward from this message of Christmas. Because I believe I still have the ambition of hope. I don't have much ambition for anything else, but I have the ambition of hope. Hope that we can build a wonderful and better country for our people, for all the citizens of Sri Lanka. And it is in this spirit, it is in true spirit of forgiveness that I wish you all a happy, peaceful and blessed Christmas and a wonderful and prosperous New Year. Thank you.